My dear friends, it's a Pentecost Sunday. The apostles, they returned to Jerusalem after Jesus' ascension and gathered in the upper room where Jesus had celebrated the Last Supper. It was the first novena and it was Jesus himself who requested it when he asked the apostles to remain in prayer until the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus asked them to stay there in prayer, in praying till the Holy Spirit comes. This was the, the very same room where Jesus appeared to the apostles on Easter Sunday. John tells us in his gospel that they had the doors locked on Easter Sunday because they were afraid. They locked themselves into the upper room during Jesus' passion because they were terrified. They may be thinking that what happened to Jesus might happen to them also. Now waiting in this, in prayer, in this upper room, after Jesus' ascension, the apostles were joined in prayer by Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the others had gone into the Acts of the Apostles. Then what happened at Pentecost? After receiving the Holy Spirit, after receiving the Holy Spirit, the apostles they left, they left this upper room and began preaching without any fear. When we continue reading the Acts of the Apostles after today's first reading, we see Peter, in a special way, Peter, St. Peter, preaching about Jesus at Pentecost after receiving the Holy Spirit. As a result of St. Peter's preaching, we read in the Acts of the Apostles that 3,000 asked to be baptized. My dear friends, just looked at the transformation in Peter as a result of receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The transformation in the life of Saint Peter. When Jesus was being questioned before Saint Hedrin, Peter denied Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times. Even before just a lady, a woman, when Peter was questioned by a lady, a slave, a servant lady. He denied Jesus three times. But now, as a result of receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Peter is transformed. He is not afraid anymore. He is fearless. Later, in Acts of the Apostles, we see Peter preaching again and as a result, he was brought before the Sanhedrin and warned not to preach about Jesus. When the Sanhedrin released him, what did he do? Did he went back to the upper room and closed the doors? No. He went back and started preaching. When you see Peter in the Gospels, you would never imagine this happening. But after receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Peter is almost unrecognizable. We see this very clearly in one incident later in the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles were working many miracles just like Jesus. And people used to bring their sick out onto the streets as they pass by and hoping that at least Peter's shadow might fall on the sick as he went past. My dear friends, nowhere in the gospel that we find that people brought their sick people, their sick brothers and sisters or relatives, hoping that the shadow of Jesus might heal them. So, Peter grew and grew spiritually after receiving the Holy Spirit. He was not afraid of persecution for the sake of Jesus anymore. 
when Jesus was being questioned by the Sanhedrin, Peter denied three times that he knew Jesus because he was afraid of persecution. But after the Pentecost, he was no longer afraid of persecution. As a result, the church grew and went from strength to strength. So, when we see this enormous change in the life of St. Peter, we can ask ourselves, we can ask ourselves, are we like Peter in the Gospels, afraid to be seen as someone associated with Jesus, or like St. Peter in the Acts of the Apostles, not afraid to be persecuted, but known to be a follower of Jesus? Which character are we? Peter in the Gospel or Peter in the Acts of the Apostle? Again and again elsewhere, I have heard this motto, proud to be a Catholic. On this Pentecost day, we can ask ourselves, are we proud to be Catholics? Which Peter are we like? Peter in the Gospel or Peter in the Acts of the Apostles receiving the Holy Spirit? My dear friends, if we are not yet proud to be seen with Jesus, proud to be Catholics, we need to pray for more of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to pray for more of what Peter received at Pentecost. Fortitude is one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Certainly, in the culture of we need fortitude to be a, a Catholic. In the same way, we have to think about the the gifts of the Holy Spirit and fruits of the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit gives us gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when we receive these gifts of the Holy Spirit, the St. Paul gives these fruits of the indulgence of saying the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have to have these, we have to produce these fruits of the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, if we have received the Holy Spirit. If we have received the Holy Spirit in our confirmation. So, I would like to conclude with the opening prayer from the Mass today, a God who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Go out and we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of the believers. Amen. God bless you.